It's the question on the mind of every economist. Who's going to host the 2018 World Cup? Well, perhaps not every economist, but certainly it's on the mind of Stefan Szymanski, the leading sports economist in the UK. I asked him for his thoughts. Obviously, we've had it's been quite controversial what's gone on this time with the, uh, the the setup by the Sunday Times journalists of a couple of the FIFA committee delegates and finding that they had uh, they were willing to accept or apparently willing to accept bribes on on camera, um, and that's led FIFA the FIFA executive to um, actually suspend two of the members of the executive. So the but the decision-making body of 24 is reduced to 22, and three or four other members of FIFA have also been suspended. So um, they've discovered some internal corruption um, as a result of this investigation, and that's um, putting pressure on them in terms of how they make the decision. But that really just go, goes to show that there's a, there's a real problem in the way that these events are being allocated. Essentially, uh, a committee of 24 is being asked to um, decide which nation on earth is going to get the most popular sports competition there is. And of course, each of the nations bidding is willing to commit huge amounts of resources uh, to winning that. So it's perhaps not surprising that one way of trying to influence the outcome is by offering some kind of financial support. Um, so uh, the, the question then is, well, what can you do to avoid those kind of problems from happening? Um, and in my view, actually, there's a relatively straightforward way of solving the problem. One of the problems is there's just too few voters in this election, and the, that makes them easily open to bribery. So a, an easy way uh, to reduce that is to expand the electorate. Now, there are actually um, something like 208 members of the FIFA, uh, and that, uh, who are the national associations, if you opened up the voting to all 208 members, then bribery would no longer become such an easy option because you'd have a lot of people you'd have to bribe. Firstly, that would be very expensive, and secondly, it's quite likely that the news would get out if you were doing this systematically. So there are things that FIFA can do to try to control the, the corruption if they just think about the problem more carefully. So other than paying bribes, are there any steps which countries which want to win the World Cup should be taking? What countries tend to be doing is um, to be uh, promising that they will host a, a very efficient event and that they will be um, that will firstly it will bring in lots of money for FIFA in terms of uh, generating broadcast income, gener generating sponsorship revenues, and then also they're going to be promising that uh, there's going to be a legacy afterwards. So there's going to be something left behind to the to the greater glory of FIFA. Now, if we look at some of the, if you look at England as a bidder, and England has uh, been pushing very hard to host the 2018 uh, World Cup then England has a very strong bid in terms of its capacity to generate revenue because there will be a lot of sponsorship and a lot of people interested in getting behind uh, the event if it's hosted in, in, in England. And also, uh, they, they've, it's a very credible bid in terms of the availability of facilities. We have all the stadiums in place, more or less. We have a good infrastructure system. Um, and so that's going to be, uh, that makes England's bid sound very credible uh, on paper. I'm sensing a but in your voice now. Well, that's the real problem. Uh, if you go back to 2005, when the bidding for the uh, 2012 Olympic Games was taking place, at that point in time, of course, France, uh, Paris were the out-and-out -out favourites to uh, uh, win uh, the Games for precisely the sort of reasons I've just suggested that England are a credible candidate um, for um, the World Cup in 2018 because they had built all of the necessary infrastructure and they had, um, they had prepared well in advance and it was obviously a very strong bid. The problem was that London ended up being a stronger candidate in 2005 because precisely because it hadn't actually done most of the work. So, what that meant was that if London got the games, it would have to start up a massive investment program. And of course, all of that investment program can be credited to the IOC, to the organizer of the games, who can point to it and say, well, look, you wouldn't have had all this wonderful infrastructure 
if it hadn't been for us. That means that builds the glory and the credit of the organization, which of course is part of their long-term goals. The IOC are in it in order to build up the IOC and to maintain its name. Likewise, FIFA are in the business of selling the World Cup to raise the profile and the name of FIFA. Uh, we saw this in South Africa where there was a huge amount of investment carried out for the World Cup, which all has FIFA's name all over it. FIFA saying, look what we've done for Africa, look what we've done for investment in the developing economy. And they're going to see exactly the same with the bid of Russia. Stefan, Stefan, you're saying such unpatriotic things and, and you're already appearing in a BBC documentary on this subject which has been attacked as being unpatriotic. Well that is a real problem and the obviously the fact that in this country we have a tendency to try to find out what's really going on and we are suspicious of large organizations like FIFA and the IOC tends and that and, and people like myself are, are willing to say so in public that tends to make us unpopular and people say well see that's why you lose the bids, that's why you, you can't host these events. I have to say, I think, uh, that I think that's very unlikely as an explanation as to why England wouldn't get it. Um, England is actually, uh, um, if, uh, uh, if England were to see, if FIFA saw it as in their best long-term interest to have the uh, World Cup here, um, they, they'd be more than happy to overcome the media um, and press complaints and, and, and general um, disruptiveness. I don't think that really causes the problem. I think FIFA are much more concerned, though, about their long-term legacy and the impact that their, their uh, activities have on the host uh, country. And if you look at what my favorite for, the, for 2018 is Russia. And if you look at what Russia's promising to do, uh, according to some figures, they're actually promising to spend $160 billion in investment, not just in stadiums, of course, but in roads and railways and airports and all the other kind of infrastructure that they'll build. And again, all of that infrastructure would have FIFA's name all over it. So FIFA would look like the organization that had led the redevelopment of the Russian economy. And of course, that would be great for FIFA. So I think that's why Russia is, are the likely winners. Nothing to do with the whole corruption scam. So the leading sports economist in the UK says it's going to be Russia that wins the World Cup. Stefan, can I ask you a cheeky question? Are you going to put money on that? Ah, well, <laughs> no, I haven't actually put any money on it. But now you've put a thought in my mind, I think I might make a trip to the online bookmaker and see if, see what the odds are. Because certainly if, uh, if they're offering generous odds on that, I think it would definitely be worth a punt. Stefan Szymanski, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, Alex.